How far can we push these surveillance from Murders at Karlov Manor? Today we're playing two copies alongside three, count it, three main deck copies of Echo of Aeons. Let's go check it out. All right, so today we're trying to run back the 5-0 that I got in my last video. You can find that in the card above, where we also played two copies of these brand new Surveillance for Murders at Karloff Manor. And if you didn't check out that video, well, you should. We went undefeated. But the idea was we were playing a Thundering Falls in addition to Undercity Sewers, so that way we have two different Surveillance to go fetch for. The idea is that you play blue ones so that way you can, you know, take advantage of cards like Ponder or Brainstorm and then fetch afterwards. So that's why you want blue ones. And additionally, you don't really want to run like a black one, like a Bayou, because you want two untapped black sources, because that's going to be a lot better in your Beseech the Mirror deck or Thoughtseize into Dark Ritual, that sort of thing. So having it be Thundering Falls, I think is just fine. But today, we're not running any main deck copies of Galvanic Relay, and instead we're running three main deck copies of Echo of Aeons. If I'm being honest with you, I did try to record this deck earlier on in the week, but I cut Ponder. And I think that was the wrong move, because I actually really liked Ponder. But I've been thinking about that deck list, and well, it was really sweet. In match one, game one, I got to play Thundering Falls into Surveilling an Echo of Aeons. And I'm like, there's something here, but I think my deck list was built wrong. So instead, we've moved those Galvanic Relays to the sideboard. And the reason why is when you're playing Legacy Leagues, there's a lot of Prison, and then there's a ton, and I mean a ton of Reanimator. So the Leagues are really not blue, and if that's the case, you'd prefer Echo of Aeon to, to just go hard. And the idea is that you combine it with Lion's Eye Diamond, you discard your hand, you flash it back, it allows you to mulligan more aggressively against these non-blue decks. And then in the sideboard, you can board into the plan that grinds blue decks into the dirt, which is why the Epic Storm has such a high win percentage against these blue decks. I'm over 80% against Delver, over 90% against the Bug Beanstalk decks. So does Galvanic Relay belong in the sideboard? Do we want Aquavions in the main deck? That's what we're trying to find out today. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, without any further ado, let's head on into the first match. I'll see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. All right, so this is going to be match number six of the evening because once again, just like the video I published on Monday, I accidentally muted for a match and a half. I am truly the worst, but we're going to run it back in that first league. Echo was actually pretty good. And here we've opened up a hand where I don't think I would mulligan this in any matchup in the format. It's just so powerful. Turn one Echo of Aeons plus Veil of Summer backup. We love that. All right, they lead on a flooded strand, picking up a tundra and ponder. In that first league, I had a couple of echo wins. That was pretty good. Uh, I didn't really miss Galvanic Relay all that much, but I did face a knot of non-blue decks. So unfortunately, um, you know, it was it played to echo strength. I love Galvanic Relay. It is my favorite match of the Gathering card. But in this league today, we're stress testing. Do we actually need it? And I mean. If we face a blue deck like we are right now, you can always board in the relays from the sideboard. But I had the thought during that league of, well, do we actually need the sideboard Galvanic relays or is leaving in Echo just fine? All right, so I'm going to start on a Dark Ritual here. Lion's Eye Diamond. That resolves. We will now play a Veil of Summer. Storm is four. That resolved. Okay, let's spin the wheel on Echo. Leaving three mana floating, one blue, two black. Storm five. Uh-oh, you dead. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Chrome Mox. Imprint the Veil of Summer. Tap for a green. We'll Veil of Summer again, just for good luck. And then Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing the Lion's Eye Diamond. Why not? And now we will grab Tendrils of Agony. Double Protected Turn 1, Game 1 on the play. I mean, I'm sorry, on the draw. But, I mean, that was pretty sweet. Okay, so likely facing a blue deck. And, well, yeah, I mean, Veil of Summer Echo is really good there. So 
The question is, do we want to board out Echoes or do we want to try leaving both combo packages in? That's another question. So you could just take out the Cabal Rituals. And I feel like you want Pesajus in this matchup as well. So we're at 63. My gut tells me we just don't want Echo, even though it just won us game one. It's just all the blue decks in the format side in Force and Negation. And Echo versus the blue decks, it's really tough because... Do you really want to echo them into another handful of Force of Wills and Force of Negations? Not likely. We will try this. They play a Tundra and Ponder again. You didn't learn your lesson the first time, I see. They did not shuffle. Another Burning Wish. We didn't really need one of those. Grab the Underground Sea. Let's look for land number two here, Ponder. We will shuffle this. Okay. Drawing a Chromox, that's actually not bad. A uh, Flooded Strand. They get, grab another Tundra and Ponder. Okay. They do not shuffle. They have six cards left. Okay. <laughs> Burning Wish number three. Am I getting Surgical here? I think I am. Okay, let's cast Brainstorm and get that free shuffle effect. Put back two copies of Burning Wish. No, I'll keep one to imprint. So you might be looking at this going, Bryant, you can relay this turn. I understand. I am not going to. I think that Galvanic Relay is so important in these matchups that you don't want to have them forcible a Chrome Mox. Orm's Chant, what? That was not the time to use that card. Sure, pass. And it looks like our opponent's actually playing Cephalid Breakfast if they're on Orm's Chant. I also might just be dead here if that's their play. Yep, they are in fact on Cephalid Breakfast. Okay. I see how it is. We'll bring the Echoes back. Some people. Dirty Cephalid Breakfast players. I tell ya. Alright, so let's get these relays out of the deck. Bring our Echoes back in. We don't want the Besajus. And I'm gonna take out one Cabal Ritual. Okay. Game number three, we're on the play. Orm's Chant player over here. We have to mulligan. I mean, this is pretty good. I think we keep this. We'll bottom the Brainstorm. Thundering Falls, Trigger. We'll keep the other Lion's Eye Diamond. That was actually a pretty good find. They play Polluted Delta, and now they're fetching. And they play a Ponder. Okay. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Let's Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing Lion's Eye Diamond. Does this eat a Force of Will? It gets dazed. Okay. That's kind of unfortunate, because now if they have a Force, I'm in trouble. But we'll flashback Echo. Storm is six. We drew Guy's Will. That's not really something we want to happen. We'll pass the turn here. My plan for the Beseech the Mirror was to put Song of Creation into play. That is why I didn't play out the other Lion's Eye Diamond, by the way. I don't know if I expressed that or not. They have another Ponder. And they did not shuffle. Another Veil of Summer. Let's brainstorm. We're locked. Oh no. Okay. Not good. Play the land and pass. They play a flooded strand. And they cast brainstorm. And now they're fetching for a nomads. I mean, they probably have the win if that's the case. I'm going to cycle a veil here. We have another veil on top. And now we're going to draw the guy's will. Play out the lotus petal. I'm going to try to draw the force here. Veil of Summer. They Force Will, Pitching Ponder. I'm going to Veil of Summer again. Hopefully we draw into a Beseech the Mirror. And they have Double Force. Pitching a Cephalid Illusionist. Okay, I have to pass the turn. Blooded Strand. And they had Double Force Cephalid Illusionist. This is the danger of having Echo in versus other blue decks. Because, like I mentioned, you draw them into Double Force. And in this instance, they also had the win. I don't need to see them mill their entire deck. I'm good. All right, so we are now 0-1. and one. Their Equa Vans might have been better than Galvanic Relay, but it came at the cost of one less sideboard copy of Thoughtseize, and I would have liked another Thoughtseize in this matchup. So not looking great in match number one. Let's try to, you know, win the remaining four matches. 
Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Let's bounce back. We're zero and one looking to break even right now. This is a very reasonable hand we will keep. I could actually try first turn Song of Creation here. I don't hate that. So the play would be Misty Rainforest for Bayou, Cast Dark Ritual, Chrome Mox Beseech, Imprint Brainstorm Play Ponder, Post Song of Creation. All right, so Dark Ritual, Chrome Mox. We will imprint the Brainstorm, Beseech the Mirror, Sacrificing Chromox, Storm 3. Song of Creation. It resolves! Land for turn, cast Ponder, and trigger the song. Two spells we can't cast. Okay, so this is a little weird. We only have one untapped blue source, so this Misty doesn't work here. I mean, I can play a land, but we have to pass, or I can shuffle and try to hit a zero in order to win this turn. I think shuffling is actually the correct move because taking the opal and playing a land is a guaranteed fizzle. We hit the lotus petal. Boom. You love to see it. All right, keeping us alive. Storm six. And there's a diamond. Storm seven. Brainstorm. Let's ponder. Storm eight. We hit another petal. We'll keep all of these. Play lotus petal. We're going to draw the Misty and the guy as well. Play the Lotus Petal, Storm 10, and that's the game. Dark Ritual, Storm Mox, Imprint Guy's Will, Dark Ritual. I'm trying to draw to a Thought Seize here so I can figure out what our opponent's actually playing today. Uh, cast Burning Wish. Hopefully they don't concede. Grab Thought Seize. Play it. Ah, oh, they were too fast. Okay. Bummer. Okay, so we don't know what we're facing. Typically, I believe that if you win like that, you should just resubmit because your deck is already set up to face the average opponent and what they're doing. So trying to like board in Echoing Truth or Besage you or whatever, it's just like hedging for something that you don't know. And if you don't know, your main deck's already set up better for that. So you should just resubmit. Uh, I think we have to ship this. Mulligan. I guess we'll keep bottom of Gaia's will. Tropical Island into Ponder. Okay. We draw Burning Wish. We'll play the Misty past the turn. On the end step, we're going to grab Undercity Sewers. They play Scalding Tarn. Grab the Undercity Sewers. And we will Surveil. Definitely want a Bloodstained Mire. Play the land past the turn. No need to brainstorm into a possible Orcish Bowmasters here. I will brainstorm right now, because if they want to pyroblast me, they have to give up their shuffle. We'll get rid of Tendrils of Agony and an extra copy of Chromox. They play a third land. We will fetch, and I'm going to grab the Thundering Falls. Veil of Summer. I think I'm done with keeping that. Cast a Ponder. Let's shuffle. That's like, all those cards are like things we sort of already have. Lion's Eye Diamond was not bad. So now I'm looking for a green source for this Veil of Summer. They play land number four. Now they're fetching. Is this a one ring? I think so. And the one ring. Oh, Minskin Boo. Oh, sure. Yeah, you got it. Come on, that green source off the top. Let's see it. Our opponent tapped out to dis disrespect me by playing a hamster. We need to punish them. Give me a green source. I'm at 14. That was not a green source. You are garbage. Okay, so let's play Chrome Mox, and we'll imprint Veil of Summer. Play a very sad Cabal Ritual. They're going to force a will pitching Brainstorm. Interesting. I think it's actually correct here to just jam, so we're going to. Because if I wait next turn, they can attack and then fling the boo and draw four cards. I, I think that's just like making our odds very bad, so instead we're going to spin the wheel on Echo. Storm is five. And they did have the double force. Sure. Okay. We'll go to game three. 
Their Thundering Falls was a little bit weird. Uh, I mean, I wanted the Surveil. I didn't have to fetch for the Thundering Falls, but I also didn't have Veil of Summer at the time. So sometimes you get got. Let's try it again. I don't think I need to sideboard here. Oh, I actually should, probably should have brought in the Galvanic Relays. That's my bad. Mulligan. This is a turn one win if our opponent decides not to keep a force again. Send the song back. Okay, Lotus Petal. Throw Mox. We'll imprint a Cabal Ritual. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Sacrifice the Lotus Petal. And Beseech the Mirror. Sacrificing Chrome Mox. Storm is five. We will get Guy's Will. And I actually don't need to sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond if they have fours. My opponent just asked if the deck does this every time I'm on the play. <laughs> I mean, I wish. We'll play a Lotus Petal. Chrome Mox. And Beseech the Mirror. Sacrificing the Chrome Mox. We'll grab Tendrils of Agony. Cast it. Target our opponent. Our opponent said GG's, GG's opponent, and we're one and one, three matches left to go. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number three, we're on the draw and I'm going to keep. I faced this person a couple weeks ago and they were a mono red painter. Are they still on it? Who knows? But I think that this hand is pretty good in most matchups and it's just worth keeping. Turn one goblin welder. Okay. We find a bloodstained mire. I will ponder. Let's shuffle those. Another veil of summer. Okay. There's a saga, you've got it. They're attacking with the Goblin Welder. Okay. They have five cards remaining in hand. Dark Ritual. I'm going to play a Chrome Mox here to imprint the second copy of Veil of Summer. And then we can cast Ponder with Veil back up if our opponent happens to have a Pyroblast or a Red Elemental Blast in their hand. Because Veil of Summer, it cares about if things are blue or black, that is true, but it also just says your spells can't be countered. So this ponder can't be countered. And now we'll look and hold on. No, this isn't a win. I mean, I could win next turn. We'll take the Beseech the Mirror. Okay. There Urza Saga goes to the second chapter. They have land number three. Our opponent taps out for a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. And then swinging with Goblin Welder. So we just have a clean wind here. One of the worst things you could actually do is fetch because you know that you can't draw guys will. So why bother ruining that? So we'll just win right now. Throw Mox will imprint the brainstorm. Play out Lion's Eye Diamond. Storm is three. Tap these for mana. Beseech the mirror with bargain. Using the green mana will sacrifice a Chrome Mox. We'll add three black. And at this point you just need to go through the motions. Grab another copy of Beseech the Mirror. Sacrifice the Chrome Mox. Storm is now five. Grab the Gaia's Will. Storm is now six. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Play a Chrome Mox. And another. Storm is now ten. We'll Beseech the Mirror again, sacrificing a Chrome Mox. Storm eleven. And then Tendrils of Agony. Easy does it. Storm is twelve on turn three. Sweet. Some people really like Veil of Summer against Painter. Or the reason that I just showed where your echoes are, you know, uncounterable, same thing with you don't have to worry about pyroblast and all that stuff. I think it's a little bit medium. Uh, I think like the argument that, yeah, you can use it to stop a painter from winning. It's kind of a pipe dream in my experience, but it's a choice you can make. I do think we want the Besajus. So if you want to leave in all the veils, you have to run out Cabal Ritual. I think I'm okay with leaving in two, but I could see the argument for just bringing in Echoing Truth over the veils as well. Game number two, we're on the draw, and we'll keep it. Why not? They kept six cards in hand. Basic Mountain, Grindstone. Okay. Four cards remain. Another Beseech the Mirror. 
I think I want to brainstorm while they're tapped out. We'll grab Underground Sea and let's play the brainstorm. That was terrible. <laughs> oh, wow. We might have just lost. Okay. There's a saga. You've got it. I don't need to see anymore. I guess. Hold on. I can grape shot the painter, but it's really bad. Like, that's not a play I want to make here. Oh, they have the Lion's Eye Diamond, so I'm actually just dead. Sweet. Now I don't have to pretend to be in this game. Love that. And notice how they chose white because of Veil of Summer. So I'm not even sure if I want this card in the deck. Let's bring in the extra thought seas and one echoing truth. Let's try this. Game three on the play. Yeah, I'm down to try this. I accidentally almost skipped my turn there. Uh, my opponent paused, which gave me enough time to undo my auto yield, but whew, I was sweating. Uh, not what I want to happen. I don't want to give my opponent a free turn. So second main phase, we will cast a Thought Seize. Trinisphere. What? Oh my. What a hand. This hand is actually insane. Because if I take Goblin Welder, they have turn one Trinisphere. And if I take Trinisphere, they have turn one Goblin Welder. So the only correct play here is to take the Lotus Petal and pray. All right, pass the turn. They play a first turn Urza Saga. Okay. My best draw here is Dark Ritual. Ding. Love that for us. Boom. Dark Ritual. Chrome Mox. We will imprint the Thought Seas. Play Thundering Falls. Come on, Spell Weekend Surveil to the Graveyard. Perfect. Okay. And now we will Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing Chrome Mox. Add three black. Grab the guy as well. Play it. Dark Ritual. I guess I can Thought Seize. I accidentally clicked it, but it's fine. They drew a Magus of the Moon. We'll take the Trinisphere. Dark Ritual. Play a Chrome Mox. Mox Opal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Tap the Opal for mana. And then we'll Beseech the Mirror. Bargain away Chrome Mox. That's Storm 11. Storm 12, Tendrils of Agony. Sweet, we are now 2-1-1 in this Legacy League, and I haven't accidentally muted myself for entire matches. That's pretty great. All right, two matches left. Let's try to win those as well. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Back at it for the fourth match, we're on the draw, and I will keep a hand that puts Peer into the Abyss on the stack on turn one. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Okay, well, reanimator shape things. They play Grief, Exiling, Animate, Dead. Having Echo of Aeons in her deck versus reanimator is certainly better than Galvanic Relay. They take the Beseech the Mirror. That card actually didn't matter at all. Uh, I guess it, it matters in the fact that we needed a card to imprint to Chrome Mox, but I didn't care about this. Basic Swamp. Okay, well, I will care about them getting rid of the Burning Wish, but we have three main deck copies of Echo of Ants that I can draw into. Draw for turn. It's a Brainstorm. I think I'm going to sit on this and just take a couple draw steps. We'll play out the Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. Because I don't want to accidentally Brainstorm lock myself, so let's just be patient. If they discard me, I'll probably cast it, but I don't want to have to cast it if I don't have to. They play Castle Lockfane. That's an interesting inclusion. So they're probably mono black then. We go to 17, and they're just passing. Dark Ritual. I'll pass. If I draw Beseech, I want the Dark Ritual. They're attacking for three. Okay. I'm at 14. They play an Entomb. They select a Troxera. Sure. And reanimate. So they will lose seven, going down to nine. Thought sees Dothy Voidwalker, Vampire Hex Mage, Dark Depths. So this is Mono Black Depths Reanimator. This was a thing like three years ago and has kind of fallen off since then. But they can play a land into Thought Seas here, and that's what they're going to do. I am pressured to cast Brainstorm. And we bricked. Oh wow. Okay, well that was a tough game one. Game two. I think I want Echoing Truth and we can take out the copies of Thought Seas and just hit resubmit. That game one is funny because if we were on the play, that's a turn one win, but we were on the draw. And uh, the die roll is just very important. 
here we have a potential turn one, depending on what the brainstorm finds. So I think we keep this. We can also just pass and then Veil of Summer. Our opponent taking a mulligan to five. Yeah, I think it's probably just pass with holding open Veil of Summer. You don't need to brainstorm on your main phase. And if they don't play a discard spell, I can grab a Surveil Land. All right, so we'll grab Bayou. Our best draw here is probably Lion's Eye Diamond off of this Veil of Summer, followed by Chrome Mox. Play the Veil. Mox Opal's not bad. It doesn't give us a win, but it's not bad. Or at least I don't think it does. That's definitely a win. Okay, love it. Imprint the Chrome, or Imprint Brainstorm. We'll play Mox Opal, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual. Let's make some mana. Beseech the Mirror, we'll sacrifice a Mox Opal. Grab another Beseech the Mirror. Sacrifice Chrome Mox. And now we will grab Guy's Will. Storm is seven. Dark Ritual. Lotus Petal. Sweet. Game number three. Let's send it back. This hand is not a keepable legacy Magic the Gathering hand. It is quite terrible. Mulligan and... This is fine enough. We'll keep this. Put a Mox Opal on the bottom. Our opponent kept seven, which is really terrifying, but there's only so much I can do. There's the Grief Exiling Vampire Hex Mage. Beseech the Mirror goes to the graveyard. They have four cards remaining. They reanimate the Grief again, so just like game one, and they take my Brainstorm. We draw another, play out our Lotus Petal, and then we'll pass. The plan here is, assuming they don't play another discard spell, I'm going to search out the Undercity Sewers and then Surveil. Okay. Grab the Sewers. I will keep Lion's Eye Diamond, because one of the ways we get out of this is Echo of Aeons. Play the Diamond. Let's play Bloodstained Mire. And Brainstorm. We could also just find the win. Do we like that? Do we like finding the win? Is that a thing we do here? I guess so. If you're into that sort of thing. Bayou. Dark Ritual. Our opponent's going to be a little bit mad here. Assuming that they don't have anything. Beseech. We will grab the guy as well. And our opponent concedes. <laughs> yes. Alright. 3-1. One, one match left to go. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The final match of this Legacy League. I have no idea what we're facing, but I'm going to keep this. Windswept Heath, okay. So probably lands, if I had to take a wild guess. Dark Ritual. We will play Thundering Falls. I'll keep a Brainstorm. Pass the turn. And it is, in fact, lands. Am I going to be locked out of the game here? They discard a Windswept Heath. You have a Maya. They have four cards remaining. Knight of the Reliquary. That's interesting, not usually a lands card. So their opponent might not be on lands. They could be like a four-color loam deck. Interesting. So the card that would have locked me out of the game would have been Sphere of Resistance, but I don't know if they're playing that with Knight of the Reliquary. All right, let's brainstorm here. ay 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 we missed again. So if I put back Veil of Summer, a Ball Ritual. Actually, I should put back Veil of Summer, Dark Ritual. I think I can hardcast the Echo. So Lotus Petal is blue number two. Yeah, we can hard cast the Echo. Chromox and print the Cabal Ritual. Chromox again. So we're going to Echo with one black floating and a land drop. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Tap for blue, tap for blue. And Echo of Aeons. So the nice thing is that Echo really allows you to crush non-blue decks. Because you can mulligan aggressively. And you just get to do more things. But here, that was a very bad Echo. Wow. Um... It didn't work out. But in general, I think Echo's really good versus the non-blue decks. So if I wanted the Burning Wish this turn, I have to fetch for Taiga. All right. A little bit short on black mana here, and fetching Taiga doesn't help. All right. Let's grab, or we'll cast a Burning Wish. 
I'm going to grab Consign to Oblivion. We'll pass the turn. I think there's a reasonable chance our opponent is on a Dark Depth strategy and they have a Knight, so Consign to Oblivion makes sense. And if we do draw a Dark Ritual for turn, I can use the Consign to Oblivion to bounce my Chrome Mox after a Song of Creation. I'm assuming that my Echo is not going to stick around and that it gets hit by Bazooka Bog, but we'll see. Our opponent plays Thespian Stage, so that does represent Lethal with Merit Lodge. Interesting, they're going to let me Echo. We draw Brainstorm. Let's cast that. We hit the Song of Creation. Interesting, so I can put back the guy as well. Put back one copy of Beseech. So I can hard cast Song here, and then play Underground Sea, cast Brainstorm. Or I can just Echo. I feel like Song of Creation is the better line here. I definitely need a fetch. I don't want to draw in a guy as well. We'll grab the bayou. So this will be our green land. Red. Blue. And then Chromox is colorless. Play Song of Creation. Underground Sea. So that's our second land for the turn. And now we cast Brainstorm. We get a Song of Creation trigger. And then the Brainstorm resolves. Two zeros? I love it. Okay, I think we've won. Two cards on top. Lotus Petal. I'm just going to auto yield to the trigger at this point. Lion's Eye Diamond. Storm is now five. Lotus Petal. Okay. Another Lion's Eye Diamond. Another Lion's Eye Diamond. Storm eight. If our opponent has a Swords to Plowshares for their Merit Lodge, things get a little bit dicey. So it's just something to think about that they could go up to 40 life. I'm going to cast Beseech the Mirror. We'll sacrifice a Chrome Mox. Storm 11. So we'll draw two here. And then we'll cast the Tendrils of Agony. So this is lethal unless they swords their own creature. Okay. Game number two. I guess it could just be green white depths. We'll bring in Beseju. Bring in Echoing Truth. Let's take out Vale of Summers. Hit submit. This was a relatively non blue league. We did face one blue deck. Cephalid Breakfast doesn't really count. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a blue deck in the fact that it's forceful, but it's not a matchup where we want Galvanic Relay. So I warded two quickly versus the control deck and never sided in Relay, but we won anyway on turn one. So that all worked out, but not a great league for Galvanic Relay. Echo always looked fine. All right, we're on the draw for game number two of the final match. We've opened up a pretty good hand. I mean, I wish it didn't have Tendrils of Agony, but otherwise this hand is quite insane. Turn one, Windswept Heath, pass. We find an Echo. So we could hard cast the Echo. I'm sorry, I misspoke. We could go Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal, Beseech them here for Lion's Eye Diamond Echo. I don't think I want to make that play quite yet. So instead, I'm going to ponder. Two lands is fine with me. So we'll put one land on the bottom, Burning Wish in the middle, and we'll take the other land. Pass. Basic Plains, okay. And a Basic Forest. Gaddic Teague. Okay, sure. We'll Bloodstain Mire, fetch out a Taiga, and Burning Wish for Grape Shot. There it is. We have selected Grape Shot. We cannot pass the turn. Thespian Stage, okay. Knight of the Reliquary. So they're representing Merit Lodge again next turn, but it won't be able to attack. I'd love to draw a Lion's Eye Diamond here. I th think another Dark Ritual would also do it. Chrome Mox, I don't believe, does. We'll play a Lotus Petal. Chrome Mox. I think I'm going to Beseech for Lion's Eye Diamond here. I don't know. Maybe that's not correct. Dark Ritual. And now we will Grape Shot them for some number. And then the Gattic for two. One at the Gattic Teague, two at the Gattic Teague, and then the other one at them. So they're going to go to 17. I have not played a land yet. So, uh, hypothetically, let's say I go get Guy's Will. Storm is currently 5. I can replay a land. I would fetch out Bayou, Dark Ritual. I mean, Guy's Will is lethal here, but I get wrecked by a Surgical. I think I'm supposed to take the chance. And hope that they Surgical the Beseech the Mirror if they have it. It resolves. I will play Lotus Petal. Bloodstained Mire. Whoops. Let's, come on. There we go. Bloodstained Mire. We finally did it. The only untapped land we have to fetch for here is Bayou. I will cast the Dark Ritual. Storm is now 8. Now we'll replay the Chrome Mox. 
I don't believe we want to imprint here. And then we'll cast Tendrils of Agony from hand. Storm 10. Our opponent concedes the match, and we finish with a strong 4 and 1. So if we look at how this league broke down, we lost against Cephalid Breakfast, then beat everything else. If I'm being honest with you, the league that I 5 0 with the other day, that deck list also would have lost to Cephalid Breakfast. So I don't think that's a meaningful difference between the two. I kind of feel like this list deserves more testing. Three main deck copies of Echo of Aeons might be good. Uh, I could see a world with Triple Echo being triple better than the triple main deck copies of Galvanic Relay. I think that this list probably needs a little bit more finessing. I don't think that this is perfect, but I think there could be something here. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Do you like main deck Echo or do you like main deck Galvanic Relay? Also, if you're a member, you can spam the emojis for which one you like more. But that's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching. And uh, oh, I forgot to mention, how could I possibly possibly forget this? So this video will go live the day before my birthday. So if you want to show thank you for a thanks, whatever, I can't talk right now. But if you want to show your thanks, there's a couple ways you can do it. Join the Patreon for our Cyborg Guide. You could also become a YouTube member for early access to all videos. You can watch the entire video queue that's videos waiting to go live for five bucks. It's pretty good value. Or you can pick up an Epic Storm Mini Token Pack. Those are the three best ways to support the content. All right, so thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. And as always, keep storming. What you should do is like, comment, and subscribe because there's no better way to support us. And if you enjoyed this video, head over to moxfield.com and follow us there. It's truly the best deck website on the internet. We update all of our decks there regularly with the latest and greatest technology, so you're always up to date. Once again, go check out Moxfield, and thank you for watching.